Amongst the great and the good, uh, leering it up at Parliament last night, was I saw and said hello to Kerry Allen, the Minister of Justice, who was pretty bullish a uh, month or more back about hate speech laws. And the law is now introduced into first reading going to uh, the Justice Select Committee. Many would say perceptively have been watered down, aren't as bad as they might be. But just because um, they're not as bad as they might be, it doesn't mean that they're not bad. And as the end of the year's rolled around, I haven't probably haven't given this the attention it deserves. And to be honest, because of the perception that the government's hate speech proposals had been moderated, perhaps I've taken my eye off the ball on this. I'll tell you an organisation that hasn't on these issues, that is the Free Speech Union, and Jonathan Ayling, who will be no stranger to you. And they came out with some pretty strong words yesterday about the, ch the rather curious changes um, that are being uh, proposed in this legislation. Jonathan Ayling joins us uh, now. Jonathan, lovely to have you with us. Um, good morning, Sean. Yeah, I almost fell for this, didn't I? Oh, it's not as bad as it was. It's all good law. Um, watered down, but you would stay, say still somewhat poisonous, the, the legislation before the House? Absolutely. And, and Sean, look, what I really want to get into here is the fact that uh, despite what you know, many in Wellington surrounded by lawyers every day may think, the biggest issues that we're dealing with here, it isn't actually the specific details of the law. Of course that matters, but the law is secondary to culture. And that's a really key thing we mustn't forget. And, and, and the rule of law is a, is a crucial liberty in a, a, a democratic society. But unless we have a culture that upholds these values, that's the really big problem. And so putting a piece of legislation through Parliament, which is taking the right to criticise you know, groups because of their re religious affiliations or their perspectives off the table, this is doing major damage to our free speech rights in New Zealand. Not just because of the law aspect, of course that is chipping away at one aspect of our speech rights, but it's signaling more generally to our culture that, that those who are buying into cancel culture or our would-be censors are absolutely right because yeah, free speech matters, but we've got to be careful with it as well. It gives, and, 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 what and, yeah, about. okay. And, and what's left out of all the proposals we had is fundamentally that you can now codify speaking against a religion in any way bringing that religion into contempt and the, you know, the interpretation of what that means is, uh, seems pretty hard to me to define. It is now about religion and it's almost, I understand that we had blasphemy laws but because we are a secular society, modern society, we took those off the books but now we are almost reintroducing blasphemy laws when you can't say, almost like you can't say you don't believe in God or someone's religion. Look, in 2019, Andrew Little uh, took blasphemy laws off the books, and I think that was absolutely the right decision to make. As a lot of your uh, listeners know, I'm a Christian, but... I think blasphemy laws are utterly absurd and, and even counterproductive to my faith. And that's exactly the same case with these laws. We do not need the state to intervene in people uh, thinking that, that my faith is absurd or, or, or that having a religious perspective is incorrect. And we certainly do not need the very legitimate criticism of, of some aspects of religious faith, let's say, let's say Glory Vale, for example, or even aspects of the homophobic uh, perspective that, that the church has held sometimes. These are legitimate things to criticise and for the, for the state to now intervene there and say it's hate speech to generalise across an entire group and to, you know, be abusive or threatening or insulting, the bar is way too low. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, but let's be honest about why this legislation was introduced, uh, recommendations of the Royal Commission into the Christchurch shootings, and it basically gives minority groups the ability to cry bully back at those that they feel are getting down on them. And let's be honest, this was done for Muslims, Jonathan. Well, and I look to, I don't even know if, uh, if the government would deny that in a way. Uh, the, the government effectively made a promise 
in, in a time of incredible suffering and incredible grief to a community that had been uh, terrorized and treated absolutely unacceptably. Uh, and, and so I, I don't think that's something that they could have walked away from. That's why, on one level, Sean, yes, we at the Free Speech Union are thrilled that uh, they're taking one part of one suggestion and putting it forward. But the, the, I think, you know, you, you, I've said before, uh, the, the question, if this group, why not that group, is a very legitimate one. And and the way that they've gone about this process of seeking to include gender, seeking to include disability, seeking to include sexual orientation, these are other grounds of uh, of protection against discrimination that don't fall uh, within the current hate speech framework. And a lot of people are going, well, if you're including religion, which is not immutable. Well, what I mean by that, mm. it's not something that isn't changeable. You, you, you're yeah. born your race, you, you, you're born your ethnic origin, uh, you can't change these things. But you, you, you take on religious belief. And it's like other things that we can take on. Why should you be protected from ever being challenged on that? I don't think they have a good answer for that. And I think they've created a real problem for themselves here where those on uh, the more progressive side of things or more those on the left more are tending to be very critical for not extending these uh, laws more. And those on the other side uh, are, are very critical for extending them at all. It's a, it's a lose-lose now. I feel like a second-class citizen too, Jonathan. I'm... I have no faith, therefore no protection against people criticising my lack of faith. That, that's absolutely right. What happens if real opposition emerges in our society to atheistic perspectives and, and there's no protection as a class for that, for individuals who might be inciting insulting against you? Do, do you not have a right to be defended from insult as an atheist if I have a right to be defended from insult as a Christian. This is not going to, this is the very point, it's not going to lead to social cohesion. Now you go, oh, bugger that ailing guy, why does he get more, more rights than I do? This is not going to help with our national unity. All right. Is there any indication that um, parties currently not in power that might be at the end of this time next year will roll back these laws? Absolutely, yes. And so both uh, Act has has gone back and forth a little bit. I, I personally put the question to David Seymour whether this would be a bottom line in terms of rolling back hate speech laws in, in terms of getting into power. He, he was a little bit um, equivocal at that uh. point. Later, he, he, he said that it, it probably would be a bottom line. But I think generally what we're seeing is both National and Act saying this is not the sort of law we should be progressing. And, and, and I'm heartened to see that. What is really more important, though, is for us to not be splitting hairs about whether it's bringing into uh, into contempt or, or the way we phrase these exact aspects of the hate speech law. It's a far more important cultural conversation that moves away from the vagaries of the law and says, in New Zealand, do we believe that robust debate and the ability to express our personally held opinions, even with regards to whole classes or groups, is a really central part to our freedom. And, and you know, uh, Chris Bishop quoted the Chief Justice of Canada in the House yesterday on the hate speech law debate saying, it, it, uh, free speech is the primary right that emerges in a democracy. It is what our entire way of government is based, based on. Yeah. on. Yeah. And, and, and we're, you know, this is just another chip away at it. So uh, at one level, we're thrilled that it's not the almost catastrophe that for our speech rights that it could have been under what was proposed. But uh, we're certainly not resting on our laurels here. Next year's going to be a really big year for the Free Speech Union as we go into drafting more policy and looking at seeing how we actually roll back some of the, the affronts that have emerged against these freedoms. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, and because, look, uh, and I can tell by the numbers that I see, people are very interested in this issue. Our discussions get replayed. Um, across social media, uh, you know, very, very highly. If you were going to sum up the year for freedom of speech, which I agree with you is just fundamental to, uh, you know, the democracy that we live in and, and the hope to continue and strengthen that democracy, uh, has 2022 been a good year for free speech or a bad year for free speech in New Zealand? 
I'm not sure I could buy into a binary like that, but I would definitely say that the fight around free speech is coming to a head. And I think that that can be really good. Look, we've seen some really positive aspects as well. Uh, the, the fight around the Listener 7 has continued and we've seen uh, the, the, Royal, uh, the Royal Society ultimately unsuccessful in that front. We saw a really good stand on free speech from Professor Dawn Freshwater from the Auckland University last week where she drew quite a a bright line in the sand. The Free Speech Union has, has gone to over 80,000 supporters and, and we're organising around the country in a way we haven't seen before. Yeah, we the like the, the court, Supreme Court came back on the uh, Molyneux Southern case and and, and made a, a bad, what well, I thought was a bad decision there. So there have been that, swings that, and roundabouts. That's right. You know, we, we, we've seen the government continue to advocate in this space. I think around some key issues, uh, we, we continue to see, to see an inability to debate areas where reasonable Kiwis disagree. And, and we're not talking about the, the fringe aspects of it, but, but if we can't have those conversations, that's a cultural problem. Like you say, the Supreme Court decision uh, was a really problematic issue that, Sean, I think if we, if we see them try and actually uh, outwork what they've said there, they're going to tie themselves up in knots. So, so we, we're going to take the good with the bad and, and continue uh, to stand in this space. But, but I think when, when Kiwis are waking up to the necessity of free speech and they're starting to reach into their own pockets to stand up for it and they're starting to organise along with us to stand up for it. I think that bodes well for our future in free speech. Yeah. And Jonathan, I meant to ask, what is the state of the organisation? Um, do you think that New Zealanders do understand the importance of freedom of speech? Uh, look, one of the biggest parts of our role, I think, is education. And a as a generalisation, no, I, I don't think Kiwis do. Uh, to be honest, Sean, before I came into this role, I don't know if I had given thoughts to freedom of expression in the way that it, it actually needs to be considered. And so next year, we're going to be working with um, two very prominent international experts, Nadine Strassen being one of them, uh, and, and then a number of local uh, experts as well, to talk about the alternatives to censorship that uh, that exists to counter some of the difficult problems that we often reach to censorship to, to, to choose. But no, I think education is very important. And, and Kiwis going, yeah, you know, Kiwi way of life, it's important that we get to have our say. But they don't understand that if we start to chip it away, oh, not, not when people feel hurt by it, not, not when people, not when they feel insulted by it or offended by it. We start to chip away at the foundation of the, the liberal freedoms that have given us our way of life. I could not agree more, Jonathan. I thank you for the uh, conversations we've had this year. I look forward to uh, talking again and for you sharing your wisdom in 2023. And I, I wish you a happy festive season. Merry Christmas, Sean. Thanks a lot. Thank you. That is Jonathan Ayling from the Free Speech Union. He's made a big contribution to the platform uh, in the last few months. Still work to be done. And uh, you know, someone makes the observation of the law currently before Parliament starts, does that mean the Christian Par Heritage Party gets a free pass and is immune to criticism due to the new hate speech laws? Luxon, a man of, of religion and faith and belief, does that trump, does free speech trump his right to religion or, or to be criticised? I hope so. Um, oh, good Lord. No, Brett, I'm not going to read. I'm just, I'm over it, mate. I'm not going to read your crazy thing. We're not talking about that. Did you, have you not got the message, Brett? And um, there we go. Um, and no, these laws wouldn't close my showdown. Um, and I'd fight. I wouldn't go down without a fight. I, I have to say that.